Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Pharmacist. In today's video, we will be learning about what is drug likeness screening. So drug likeness screening is a very important concept in drug design, computer aided drug design as well as for pharmacy students. So pharmacy students in their final semester of the fourth year, they have this concept which is known as drug likeness. So in this video, we will be learning about what is drug likeness screening. And what are the different types of screening parameters used in testing drug likeness for any molecule. Now coming to the definition of drug likeness. So drug likeness it can be defined as a complex balance of various molecular properties and structural features which determine whether a particular molecule is similar to the known drugs. For example we have a molecule. So this is the structure of a paracetamol molecule. So in this paracetamol molecule, there are different functional groups. For example, we have this aromatic ring, we have the OH group, we have the C double bond O group, NH group is there and a methyl group is there. So different functional groups are present on this molecule. So which functional group is responsible for its drug likeness activity? What are the different properties which are responsible? So the molecular properties and the structural features. So the molecular property means it can be its weight that is the molecular weight, its solubility, log p value etc. And the structural features that means the volume which it occupies. All these things they help in determining the drug likeness properties of any molecule. So drug like molecules they exhibit different uh, adimity properties that means they have uh, every molecule has its own absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion and toxicological parameters that is the pharmacokinetic parameters. So what are the different pharmacokinetic parameters? Based on that also we can identify the drug likeness properties of molecule and we also check for the synthetically feasible whether the molecule is easy to synthesize or not and different pharmacophore features. So the what are the possible pharmacophore features which the molecule is having which is responsible for the interaction of the drug molecule with the protein target. So each drug molecule acts on a particular protein in order to bring about its action. So what are the different uh, uh, pharmacophore features which are responsible for the interaction of the molecule with the protein target. So this also comes under the drug likeness study of any drug molecule. Basically pharmacokinetics and toxicity issues. So these are the main cause for the failure of most of the new drug molecules in clinical trials. So every day hundreds of molecules will be tested in clinical trials. So some of the molecules they fail in the clinical trials. So mainly because of the poor pharmacokinetics and toxicity issues. So the pharmacokinetics and toxicity issues are mostly responsible for the failure of the new drug molecules in clinical trials. So by doing virtual screening, it helps in evaluating the drug likeness of a small molecule. So in order to improve the chances of success of any new drug molecule, what we can do is we can apply different filters. So one such filter is virtual screening. In virtual screening what we do? We evaluate the drug likeness properties. That means what are the different properties which are responsible for bringing about the drug like activity of the molecule. So it is this virtual screening is independent of the drug target for which the molecule is used. Means in uh, tra clinical trials we have some millions of molecules to be tested and protein targets are also in thousands. So independent of the drug molecule and independent of the protein target, virtual screening is a procedure which helps in identifying or measuring the drug likeness of the small molecules. So what is virtual screening and how it is done? I have explained in another video. You can see in my PharmaGest YouTube channel under the playlist virtual screen a video I have made on virtual screening also. 
so by uh, if you want to know more about virtual screening and understand what it is you can watch that video and come back to this video again and continue the video so a number of small molecule frame a small number of frameworks so each molecule it has different ring structures and linkers so based on this ring structures and linkers also we can characterize the drugs so and also the number of side chains which are present in the molecule so these are also responsible in identifying the drug molecules what are the different methods for identifying the drug likeness of any molecule so we have four different methods the first one is simple counting methods functional group filters topological filters and pharmacophore filters so all these four filters we can you uh, we can utilize in order to estimate the drug likeness of any new molecule now coming to the first one it is simple counting methods so what are the different simple counting methods which help in evaluating of any molecule so we have a number of databases and these databases they contain millions of molecules and all the information about these molecules that means based on their properties is available in the databases so we have simple descriptors which can be easily calculated and counted so in that counting schemes is the first filter which is used in a virtual screening approach so what are the different counting methods they are log p value so the partition coefficient of a molecule what are the different upper and lower limits of this molecules all these are given in the different databases and then we have the molecular weight then we have the number of hydrogen bond acceptors and donors molar refractivity rotatable bonds heavy atoms polar surface area net charge so all these different properties so they can be counted that means they have a numerical value and we can identify and estimate the minimum and maximum values of this different parameters hence they are known as simple counting methods so we can use these simple counting methods in order to identify whether the drug is a having any drug likeness property or not for example if the molecular weight of any molecule is more than 500 what does the filter do it will simply eliminate the molecule from the screening process because a higher molecular weight compound is difficult to get absorbed in the body so in this way the different uh, molecules they are eliminated from the screening process so this helps in early evaluation of the molecule that means fail fast and fail early so if it is having a if it is in, uh, not uh, satisfying any of these properties that molecule will be eliminated if we are not eliminating what happens in further process when we do clinical testing everything so there is loss of time and loss of money also and loss of uh, different efforts of the um, effort which is involved in the testing process everything will be wasted so that is why we have these simple counting methods so if a molecule satisfies these parameters it will be kept in the screening process otherwise it will be eliminated and it cannot reach the final step that is the clinical trials in that manner we can save a lot of time and money and next one is functional group filters so in functional group filters so there are a number of functional groups present some functional groups are reactive some are toxic and sometimes we have unsuitable compounds so all these compounds they have to be eliminated so in order to eliminate there are different substructure filters which will be helpful in eliminating these functional groups and these reactive functional groups they include for example alkyl halides peroxides carboxides and unsuitable leads they may have crown ethers disulfides aliphatic methylene chains which are seven or more carbon long so all this what happens is if we are not eliminating them early if they are carried out so in they will fail in the clinical trial process so that is why what we do all these reactive functional groups they are eliminated in the virtual screening process 
crown ethers so what are crown ethers crown ethers are cyclic chemical compounds which consist of a ring which is containing ether groups so there are r o r so different more number of ether groups are present for example here you can see this is a 15 crown it is having five oxygen molecules five ether groups and 18 crown here you can see six ether groups are there so the most common crown ethers they are cyclic oligomers of ethylene oxide the repeating unit being ethylene oxy that is ch2 ch2o so this will uh, if we are retaining this reactive functional groups what happens they will fail later in the clinical process so that is why if we uh, we are eliminating this in the early stage itself what happens we will be saving a lot of time money and resources and another unsuitable natural products they can include quinones polyenes cyclohexamide so these functional groups are also they are eliminated if they are present in any molecule and again we have different databases so for example these databases that is toxic effect of chemical substances database case talks topcat and derec so these are commercially available databases which are used to evaluate compounds for potential toxicity and screening out these compounds which contain certain atom groups which are associated with toxicity provides a practical way and fast way to reduce large databases because the databases contain millions of compounds so in order to filter all the toxic groups these databases can be used these databases they contain information about the molecules which are containing toxic or reactive functional groups so based on that data what happens is we can eliminate any molecule which is having this reactive or toxic metabolite causing functional groups from our study so for example some of the reactive functional groups are sulfonyl halides so this is an example for sulfonyl halide there is a sulfur group and double bond o and an halide group acyl halides alkyl halides anhydrides halopyrimidines epoxides aldehydes amines thioesters so if the database contains any of the molecules which contain these functional groups they will be eliminated from the virtual screening process because these based on the data which is available these molecules or these functional groups they produce toxic metabolites hence they are eliminated in the early process that is a virtual screening process next we have topological drug classification so in topological drug classification we use artificial neural networks so artificial neural networks is a latest advanced topic which helps in Uh, elimin uh, eliminating fun uh, reactive functional groups so it is based on different assumptions so what are the different assumptions so generally it is assumed that compounds with structural similarity to known drugs they exhibit drug like properties such as oral availability low toxicity membrane permeability metabolic stability etc so based on these properties neural networks are developed and this neural network approaches they can discriminate between drugs and non drugs with 80% certainty so these artificial neural networks they use different codes to represent the molecular structure and classify drugs from non drugs by using different layers of neurons so for example so this is how a neural network approach appears so this neural networks they were developed based on the network which is present in our human brain so our human brain contains neurons and neurons are a network of this neurons which take information process and give the output based on the stimulatory input and if we output is a reflex reaction similarly neural network approaches what they have they have different layer the first one is an input layer which takes in the information and then there is a hidden layer in the hidden layer the information is processed and the decision is taken and then in the output layer the result is given out this is another example of a 
neural network so it is containing more layers so the previous one you have seen there are only three different layers but here there is one input layer and one output layer and in between there are four different hidden layers so all these four different hidden layers they process the information make the decision and give the output into the output network so based on the number of hidden layers that means based on the amount of data the number of networks either increases or decreases and the information is given next another method is recursive partitioning in recursive partitioning it is based on decision tree approach decision tree approach means it is similar to a tree where you can get a decision as yes or no so it is another method to extract knowledge from a database in order to classify drugs from non drugs that means if it is having this property the decision will be true if the property is no it is not satisfying the property the decision is false so it is like a tree like structure yes or no so this is also another latest method which is used to identify drug likeness properties of any molecule and finally we have pharmacophore filters so in pharmacophore filters this is also another filter which is used to assess the drug likeness property of any molecule so a simple pharmacophore point filter it is based on the assumption that drug like molecules contain at least two distinct pharmacophore groups so what are pharmacophores and how they are made and what are the assumptions and what are the different types how a, how the pharmacophore is developed on that also i have made another video if you are interested to know and if you want to understand what is pharmacophore you can watch that video in my playlist so four functional motifs have been identified which guarantee hydrogen bonding capabilities that are essential for the specific interaction of a drug molecule with its biological target so these motifs they can be combined to functional groups that are also referred to as pharmacophore points that means so different functional groups which are present in the molecule they are responsible for the interactions of the drug molecule with the biological target so these functional groups which are responsible they are also called as pharmacophore points means every drug molecule has a for example an oh group or an nh group which binds with the protein target in order to exert its action so these pharmacophore filters or the pharmacophore points they can be amine amide alcohol ketone sulfone sulfonamide carboxylic acid carbamates guanidine imidine urea and ester so like this different functional groups so these functional groups they are called pharmacophore points which are responsible for the action of the drug molecule on the protein target so these are the different filters which help in assessing the drug likeness of a molecule or a new drug molecule so i have explained four different function, uh, filters which help in identifying the drug likeness properties of any molecule so these different uh, filters they help in studying a new drug molecule so i hope the video was informative you hope you like the video if you like the video do not forget to share and subscribe to my channel See you in the next video.